Hi, my name is Justine Harkness, and in this video, we'll look at how to use Kirchhoff's loop rule to determine how the voltage drop across an existing resistor will change when we add resistors both in series and in parallel. Kirchhoff's loop rule states that the voltage drop across any complete loop is equal to zero. And let's take a look at what a complete loop in a circuit actually looks like. So we'll have a battery, and we'll have some sort of so circuit component. Say here we have a resistor. If we were to start at the positive terminus of this battery and go around this circuit back to the positive terminal of the battery, the voltage drop in that entire loop has to be equal to zero. This means that the voltage that we gain going up the battery must be equal to the voltage that we lose across this particular resistor. So in general, the voltage that you gain in a battery must be lost as you come back through the circuit. And let's take a look at what this looks like when we have resistors in series and resistors in parallel. Let's start with resistors in series. So here we'll draw out our battery. And let's say we have two resistors in this circuit. We have R1 and we have R2. Now let's apply the loop rule to this circuit. So we go gain some voltage as we go up this battery, we gain a voltage of V, which would be equal to the voltage of our battery. And then we go through our resistors. Now we'll always see a drop in voltage as we go through our resistors. And then we'll come back to our starting point. So the voltage that we gain going up the battery has to be the equal to the voltage that we lose across R1 and R2. Now if we were to add a third resistor, say we'll put it in over here, we have R3. Notice that now the voltage that we drop across this circuit would be the voltage across R1, R2, and R3. Thus, whenever we add a resistor in series, the voltage drop across those other resistors has to decrease. Now let's take a look at how this is different when we're dealing with resistors in parallel. So we'll start out with a battery, and we'll just start by adding one resistor. So if we look at the loop that we'd have right now, we can go from our battery around through our resistor and back. This would be one complete loop. Notice if we were to add another resistor to this circuit, if we add it in parallel, notice that there is no change done to this existing loop. Thus, whenever we add a resistor in parallel, the voltage drop across the other resistors does not change. Because we are creating a new loop, we are not altering the existing loop. Now let's apply this to some practice questions. So this question gives us a circuit diagram and a few questions to answer. Now our first part is asking how the voltage drop across R1 would change if we add another resistor in parallel with R4. So first let's just identify the loop that R1 is located. So we go through our battery, we go through R5, go through R4, we go up through R1, and then back. So this is our R1 loop, and we are asking what's going to happen if we add a resistor in parallel with R4. So this would be adding another resistor in parallel. Notice that we don't actually make any modifications to our yellow loop for R1. It, since we added something in parallel, it's not having any effect on this loop. There would be no change to our voltage drop across R1. Now let's take a look at part B. 
Here we are asked how the voltage drop across R3 would change if another resistor was added in series with R4. So let's first identify our loop as we did before. We're looking specifically at R3. We can go through and trace the loop that we go through to get go through R3 going back to our battery. Now here we are adding a resistor in series with R4. So this would be like adding another resistor over here. Notice that this resistor is added in the same loop in which R3 is located. Since we have more resistors to pass through to get back to um, complete our loop, we would expect to see a decrease in the voltage drop across R3 since this new resistor would be added in series to R3. Finally, let's take a look at part C. This is asking us how the voltage drop across R3 would change if another resistor was added in series with R1. So again, let's identify our loop for R3. We've already looked at this one before. So here's our loop that contains R3. And we are adding a resistor in series with R1. So we would essentially be adding that somewhere like in here. Notice that this new resistor is added in parallel to R3. There is no modification done to the existing loop on which R3 is located. Thus, there would be no change in the voltage drop across R3. So now you should feel more comfortable using Kirchhoff's loop rule to predict how the addition of resistors will affect the voltage drop across other resistors.